Some other strange ones, this is a spigalian hernia. And a spigalian hernia is one that does not completely exit the peritoneal cavity. It is herniating through transversalis, internal oblique, but it is still contained by the external oblique muscle. So you can see there's dilated small bowel, there's mesenteric stranding, but there is an intact external oblique muscle overlying the whole thing. So you see it's sitting right between those oblique muscle layers. And there is the pinched exiting loop of small bowel. So it is definitely causing obstruction in that the bowel entering is thicker, white, larger caliber than the bowel exiting. Right, so that is a spigalian hernia. I wouldn't quite call that strangulated, but I would say there are some early uh, ischemic impact right, with a little bit of wall thickening and some mesenteric stranding. So that is a spigalian hernia. All right, next one is a Richter hernia. And in these cases, it's one wall of the bowel that herniates. So this is kind of a drive-by herniation where you'll see the bowel loop going across the, the base of that hernia and only that hernia is only the anterior wall of the involved small bowel that is herniating out there. And of course, there's bowel dilation denoting the obstruction. You'll see there's a dilated loop coming in and a decompressed loop leaving. All right, so that is a Richter hernia. Did anybody notice what else this patient has? He's pretty cirrhotic uh, when we go back down through the liver here. Pretty cirrhotic that it's all nodular regeneration there in his liver. Obviously, these are unrelated, but uh, he's fortunate he came in with a Richter hernia so they could identify the cirrhosis. All right, so that's a Richter hernia. And that is what I brought today. Let me look at our time. You know what, we can do a couple more cases. Let's go on and do a couple of the appendicitis cases before we finish up for today. Okay, so I've got a couple cases of Meckel diverticulum and then some cases of appendicitis, and we'll do those here now. So this is a Meckel diverticulum. It's a blind ending structure that's coming off the small bowel, right, the ilium usually as much as two feet from the ileocecal valve. So it is clearly originating from the small bowel rather than from the cecum, and that's how it can be distinguished from an appendix. It otherwise looks a lot like an appendix though. So it's usually in the same quadrant of the abdomen, and again, it's tubular blind ending, and so can look for all the world like an appendix. So here he is, a little, just a finger-like projection, and you can see small bowel coming into it and small bowel exiting. There's the small bowel going on past, right, in, in the anterior right aspect of the abdomen and coming in right there. All right, so clearly coming off of small bowel, and this is one I would call inflamed. This is Meckel's diverticulitis. You can see the wall is thickened. It's stranded. You basically read these just like you would an appendix for appendicitis, right? And that is clearly inflamed. It's subtle, but if you saw an appendix that looked like that, you would definitely call that appendicitis. So again, there's the small bowel coming in, a little projection coming off, and the small bowel continuing on to the anterior and right aspects. All right, so that is a Meckel's diverticulum, diverticulitis. So I didn't realize this about Meckel diverticula. They can form stones just like an appendix could. And ultimately they can become so inflamed that they perforate. And that's what this is. There is the thick walled and inflamed blind ending structure. This one even more obvious because it's more in the transverse plane. And there's a little dot of gas there. That one may or may not be extraluminal. It's a little hard to tell because the wall is so fuzzy and inflamed. 
But on this next lower cut, you can see that it definitely is. Look at that stone. A crazy concretion looks like a gallstone for all the world. And there is a little dot of gas adjacent to that as well, if I remember correctly. So here it is. You can see it's coming off a stretch of small bow. Look at the stranding, the wall thickening, and there is that dot of gas. And I circled the base and the efferent loop of bow exiting it. So this is a Meckel diverticulum with a stone and a perforation on top of the diverticulitis. Thick wall, fuzzy, and see it coming off the small bowel there, and you'll see that small bowel continue on posteriorly into the patient's right. There you go. All right, so that is a Meckel diverticulum with stones and perforation. All right, a couple of appendicitis cases. Uh, appendicitis is so uh, run-of-the-mill, and we just looked at a great case of, a, of an inflamed diverticulum, and that, I think, really speaks to the subtlety of acute appendicitis and sets your calibration appropriately. So I decided instead of showing more appendix cases like that one, I would show the other extremes. So this is truly the worst non-perforated appendicitis I have ever seen. This appendix is so swollen and so inflamed and the wall has become so hypodense and macerated that it has almost radiographically disappeared. It's right there. It's making a little arc that arcs slightly to the patient's posterior side. And what ultimately we'll see with all these images is that it's making a complete circle that encircles portions of the terminal ilium and cecum. Okay, so keep that in mind. That's one portion of the circle. Here is another and another, right? These are the mid portions of the circle. And then those are going to come together inferiorly. There's that slightly arcing anteriorly this time, right? It's almost like the ghost of a giant appendix. It has almost vanished. It's just so swollen. And again, it's encircling terminal ilium and a portion of cecum as well and causing obstruction and that's what you're seeing right there is a little terminal ilium right and that's more apparent here on the uh, coronals but you can see that arc now right that whole lower portion of a circle that's all dilated inflamed appendix and there is that ilium coming in through the center of the circle and here again the top portion of that circle now, right? It's an appendix making a complete circle and it's encircling the ilium right there. Yeah, this is pretty incredible. This thing is about to blow, there is no doubt. So there it went. You see how it's making a circle. It's going a little bit posterior, superior to anterior, inferior. So we're picking up the top portion right there and it sweeps down and makes a perfect circle. And you can see that terminal ilium going through the center of the circle that it forms and narrowing down significantly. Okay, so there's the top of the circle. There's the ilium passing through right there and the bottom of the circle. Right, and here it is on the coronal. This really helps you appreciate the encirclement. I think of the ilium. So right there, see the circle? Top portion is posterior. So the first part you see is, is the anterior inferior right there. See that? And it actually is encircling a bit of terminal ilium and the distal aspect of the cecum. So that is the worst non-perforated appendicitis I have ever seen. All right, this is a, an interesting complication. This is pneumatosis of the ascending colon. And you see that and you're thinking, well, this is colitis or ischemia. But then we go down, you can see that this is actually a dilated appendix with a thick walled enhancing uh, inflammation and an appendicolith within it. It's funny in the days of plain film, if they saw an appendicolith, they would 
actually take your appendix out whether you were sick or not. They just assumed you were at risk for developing appendicitis. Now, of course, CT is so much more sensitive for appendical lifts, they don't carry nearly the same significance. You see these all the time in non-inflamed appendices, and people are not rushing to lop them out. All right, so here is the pneumatosis. It's worth just looking at that, how it's in the uh, dependent portion of the colon, and these gas bubbles are clearly not obeying gravity or the rules of density. So that posterior wall of the ascending colon is the one to really focus on. The colon almost always has some contents uh, with gas in them, so it can be a tricky thing. And then as we go down here into the cecal region, you can see that appendix, a nice circular dilated appendix with thick walls, inflammatory stranding, and an intraluminal appendicle lift. So this is just infectious colitis ascending from the appendix, right? And the, uh, the other thing I would point out is you will frequently see portal venous thrombosis or portal venous gas arising from an appendix as well. So always check the adjacent bowel for changes and also always check the portal vein that is draining any region of inflammation. All right, a last appendicitis case, just stacked up appendicle lifts, but also note a gas-filled collection of fluid within the pelvis consistent with an abscess. So there's an initial appendicle lift a little more proximally, and then a whole bunch of them. And you can see those are connected by a tubular structure. And then just a big collection in the cul-de-sac, essentially, of the pelvis. So note, see there is a tubular structure connecting those, and then it's blind ending right there. And this abscess is just extending off the tip of that appendix. Appendicitis is crazy. When it gets in the cul-de-sac, you know, it can uh, encompass the inflammation, can affect the rectum, and it can even encompass it and cause distal colonic obstructions. And you wouldn't think that, right? You'd think it would be proximal colonic where the origin of the appendix is. But they're so close together uh, down in the pelvis that on the old time barium enemas, you could actually diagnose appendicitis by the irregular narrowing of the sigmoid or rectum uh, based on the adjacent appendicitis. So that was back when men were men and ships were wood. And of course, we don't rely on that anymore. But anyway, I always think of that sort of thing when I see these cul-de-sac abscesses resulting from appendicitis.